Hello and welcome back to Pirates, no, Pillars. And we gotta go into the storm to finally find Ukaizo. I was hidden all this time and that fire tearing company is gonna help me. We got our sweet submarine and they're gonna wait outside while we're actually getting ready. To, well, we gotta find a way to turn off the, well, I'm saying turn off the storm, but apparently it's generated by something. <clears throat> There's plenty of ocean to sail and many lands to explore, but what lies ahead of you dwarfs them all. Should you choose to sail on, you suspect there will be no return, not to the death fire you have come to know. You set a course through the channel into the uncharted turbulent seas. Ondra's mortar rages on the horizon, a vast wall of roiling clouds and rain punctuated by the silver flickering of flicker of light lightning. The wind pushes against you as if Toward whatever lies beyond from Suck Theotis' approach. That's how the submarine is called. Suck Theotis leads the fleet, crashing through the turbulent waters like uh, an axe through armor. God's alive, Beldul mutters, staring up at the storm. <clears throat> Little Luca blinks uh, at the blackening sky. New and old salt, ones who claimed the mortar were the edge of the world, I called him a fool, but now, though, the navigator's head shakes sadly, now I'm so certain. Yeah. Ed bowed slightly, handsome Elia smiles. Today's as a good day as any to learn what the gods have in store for us. For you, not so much. Then having a stupid head. <clears throat> Shit, Captain! One of the captain, one of the hands cries. Hostile vessels impound to full report. With a shake of the head, Baldo emits a grim, grim chuckle. Suppose it would be too much to ask to be let alone out there. The inverted crown flies atop the mast of the Watley Principi fleet, along with a dozen other pennants and colors representing a dozen different pirate lords and ladies. Their shanties are audible, even against the storm. The approaching fleet! Uh, numbers at least as many ships as your own, and maybe more. Beldo frowns against the wind, the fleet turning captain, setting their gun ports against the enemy. The hands look to you from their stations, Beldo's eyes hold yours, the crew stands ready. What are your captain's o uh, what are your captain's orders? Shouldn't we, what are, what are your orders, captain? All hands to battle stations, we are joining the fray. Are we though? I think yes. Do we just try to take out a bunch of... Pirates now? Or... Do we... Not risk the ship, let them fight it out, take us into the storm, rum the briggery. I suppose this is a... Uh, I very much suspect that if you fight it out, you can probably just do it uh, flawlessly and everyone's just gonna be like, hey, thank you, thank you, but if you let them, then your reinforcements are probably gonna be uh, <clears throat> affected. Let's just go into the storm. The deck presses against your feet and as Sakiteotas comes at about, the thunder of cannon fire vying with the thunder continuously rolling uh, from the mortar. Your ship straightens, the bow pointed directly into the storm. You lurch forward as the deck pitches violently. You grab the aft rail to keep uh, from going overboard. Beneath you, just below the surface of the water, swims some immense creature. It moves towards the battle, the water curling back like skin on either side of the beast to reveal a monster ferocity not of flesh, but of slick adra and gleaming metal. <clears throat> the surface of the water bulges, then bursts, and with a roar like the crash of uh, the surf, a dragon explodes from the water. The filmier uh, scaled form of uh, sky uh, sweeps low, wings outstretched just above the white tipped waves before spraying its um, briny breath over the metallic monster. Wow, Sky, you show up? Wow, this is like Mecha Godzilla versus Godzilla. 
the monstrosity turns on the sea dragon and they slam into one another, tearing at each other with tooth and fang. Essence powers off uh, the pair as they pound one another with their abilities at point blank. What the hell is this? Little Luca gapes. Sweet merciful Andra, I was not expecting that. Mess that bastard up good, shouts Irena. The hands turn back, pointing. Did you see that? You got a, a god's damn dragon. Yeah! You gain some morale. Go. Now while I, I hold the attention of these things. Uh, Sky's voice uh, echoes among your thoughts. Our depths are cleared, Watcher. Wow. Well, I I believe that is to be the case. Holy crap. Baldo turns from the carnage. Captain, we might not get another chance. All hands look to you. We come this far, there's no turn back now. What? Eotas threatens everything and everyone you know? Whatever you love, whatever you hold sacred, we are here to save it. Cut the chatter, all hands, brace for the storm. Um, we come this far, there's no turning back now. Eyes closed and face turned towards the black clouds. Handsome Elian whispers, nor has there ever been. The path were set before Wadevan marched on Deerwood. Beldo nods. Sometimes the only way back is forward. The mate calls across the deck, all hands to stations. Time to show the gods what suck Teotas be made of. Right. <coughs> Andre's mortar uh, looms before and above you, dominating the whole of the world. Rain begins to fall. The storms of Andra's mortar encompass the visible horizon. Hurricane winds roar like an imprisoned beast, blowing with enough force to warp the very seas. Past the curtain of rain and above the swell of waves, you can just barely perceive the outline of colossal Adra pillars. You initiate the dive process with a mixture of hope, apprehension and disbelief. Air hisses as the ballast tanks fill with water. Groans of pressure emanate from somewhere in the hull. But your submersible uh, gradually dips beneath the waves. But? Yeah, okay, sure. It would make more sense as as? Okay. You close your eyes and place your trust in Raritayan engineering. Then somewhere in the tie quarters, a bolt goes uh, flying like a pop button and hits the far wall with a loud ping. All is silent. Slowly but surely, and the propeller spools to life and carries you forward beneath the storms. You navigate around the trunks of massive Adra pillars rising from the sea floor, but the work of crossing Andra's mortar is accomplished with ease. Finally, you spot the shape of a bulky landmass ahead, it's a Kaizo. You let out a sign of relief. We actually see uh, buildings. <clears throat> Ornate spires reach up from the island, hinting at the city within. Not all of a Kaizo was weathered the millennia with equal grace. Other structures jut and lean out of the surrounding shallows, making the waters around the island impassably impassable by ship. You resolve to take a skiff the rest of the way. Okay, we're finally at Ukaizo. Oh my god. <laughs> what a bloody journey. So getting here was not easy. This looks like a proper place. Maybe we're gonna learn that Luana was a thriving civilization that the gods did destroy. I'm kinda curious because this could be the last stretch to push us push us toward the har a harder uh, choice. So that that uh, sea chicken Definitely looks uh, inguitan or 
Like, no one has anything like this. The creature stares down at you with only dim recognition of your presence. Water drips down the tip of its mallet like head. Whoa, that's a... Uh... Where would you even stab something like that? You figure it out. Stay close, Ishii. That's one heavy bird. I'm not too proud to admit when I'm scared. Terrified, actually. Oh, sure, that. Whatever that be, why not? The construct turns to the sound of speech, slowly... Slowing only dim awareness of the meaning. It swivels its head back around to face you. So alone. Never alone. Reached. Nope. A voice paused at your mind in a clumsy, unpracticed fashion. You feel something like the mental equivalent of a squint. Yeah, by a colossal god made of Aldra. Where have you been? Here. We have been here. Oh, probably multiple souls were used to create that with animancy. Where are the gates of the Kaizo? We guard the silence of a geysel. You are a disturbance. I'm just trying to reach Elthas. He's the one you want. Elthas has disturbed the bones of a geysel. The old pacts permit him to pass. But you will go no further. A geysel is closed. The gates are barred. Before we settle this, I want answers about a Kaizo. Our covenant with the old ones does not forbid questions. The living were meant to forget a Kaizo. Nothing can be gained of remembering it. If I rest my legs while we chat, it will make for a better fight for both of us? What the hell? The gates of Kaizo regard you in disgruntled, calculating silence. A challenge would be a welcome distraction. Take your reprieve, doomed one. The chosen people of the dead fire called a Kaizo home. The outsiders were their contemporaries, full of wisdom, ingenuity, and terrifying ambition. That sure sounds like the Ingwithans. Guess they got around. The outsiders passed from the world. None of them remain. Not all of them passed, but we got the one they left behind. The construct fixes on Adair with a quiet mixture of irritation and curiosity. Finally, it steers its focus back to you. The old ones and the outsiders traded, collaborated, learned, and built together. Outsiders augured the doom of the old ones. The rift unmade them both. What caused the rift? The outsiders coveted ancient Bukaizo. Its occupation was a hindrance. Machines were built on a foundation of outsider lies. When the machines were nearly done, the outsiders constructed bodies of flesh and bone. Bodies? Skeletons, now. Their remains littering Great Lokaizo. What were these machines? Ones which drew the spirits of the dead through a sieve. Hmm. Finally, the outsiders fashioned a guardian to stand vigil over their work. Our bond with the old ones compelled us to trust their allies. They offered us a trade, eternal life for eternal service. We were ordered to slam shut the gates of Okaizo for all time. What happened when the machines went active? The outsiders vanished from the world. Leaving the old ones dumbfounded. Quiet gave way to chaos. Storms battered the seas. The sleeping hearts of mountains awoke with fury. When the last screams of the old ones faded, only we remained. So no one has been here uh, since the devastation? None but the green colossus whose every footstep disturbs tranquility. You are the first kith to visit the shores of Lost Kaizo, and you will be the last. By now, you are rested, 
and there is little more to tell. May your journey through the wheel be an informed one. I didn't come here to fight, but if you part the way, then I have no choice. What is this? Island Dome 1 up plus Deathfire Archipelago. That's pretty specific. You chose death when you set your bearing, Traveler. Prepare yourself. Okay, rest in peace, Construct. Oh, we managed to knock it down. Adrian and Animat. Oh, we might need some AoE here. A lot of people. Let's do a uh, wind. Oh, that. Okay, that's a lot of dead people now. I can just do uh, a bunch of missiles at him. Oh, we can actually meteor shower him as well. Let's do it. I never do it. Do your fucking job. Do it. Let's meteor shower him. Come on, meteor shower. Come on. It has to happen. What happened to him now? Got it. The hell are you guys? Can we just attack him? Apparently we can't. Just some sentinel. Seems pretty weak. This thing isn't doing the job. Vander stance. Oh! Zarfim actually took some damage. I don't even see their HP. Oh, he's back. Let's go. Whoa! Double head now? Why didn't you have double heads in the first place? What the hell is that? What the hell are you doing? Come on, guys, go fight! What are you waiting for? Let's do a middle left to missile at him. Can't make a dent. Hey, so you are. Need something stronger. Will we have another middle left to missile? Sure. Didn't work. This thing isn't doing the job. Rest in peace, big ass dragon. You have anything good? Maybe you can use this to craft. Sure. Oh. Rest in peace. I need something stronger. Come on! Don't make him friend. Let's kill him. Like this, Eltas is gonna be no challenge whatsoever. Oh, really? Grand Promenade. I don't know how long this will be, but it seems like it's we are. I don't know. This is at 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 very least the last ten hours. I think I would, I, I would suspect it's the last two or three. This is the last thing we do. Everything is explored. Apparently, we can go to back to the Death Fire. Oh, you all want to talk to me? Hey, this brings back some memories, huh? 
Talk about burn? No. What would you? What did you do after we ended the legacy? This is the time to ask that. Uh, I like that feeling, knowing we'd stop Theos. We were part of something big. Oh, I, I suppose I said like like when we stopped. No, never mind that. The legacy. That was something I never felt before, not even at war. Guess I went looking for it again. Not that I wanted to tangle with gods, but something smaller, something I thought I could manage. I looked all around the Deerwood, but that place has too many ghosts for me. Things I'd just as soon forget. Ended up moving to Adir and tracking down my parents. They went there as refugees after the war ended. No, I literally asked... No, I asked the thing that I, I wanted to ask. That what did he do after... Um, the legacy? Did you find a way to be useful? I don't care about that. Let's get moving. She still wants to I talk to me. Time. What did you do after the end of the legacy? What your thoughts on Eotas at the moment? That's better. It doesn't seem much different than Theos and Wurika, does he? Hmm. Powerful beings thinking they know what's best for us. Not caring the costs we pay. Yeah. But his justification here is that maybe he can put a stop to that. Starting to think we'd be better off without the gods. At least we'd know the messes were our own. We have... We can't talk to Seraphim. I got time. Tell me about Burn. I don't think there's much to say. He was alone. Got talked into believing in something that sounded good to him. We couldn't talk him out of it. Another soul torn away by Aethys, whether or not he meant it. But we can talk with the companions now. Hey, look who- uh, I like that feeling. That was not that I looked- Ended up moving to Adir and tracking down my parents. They went there as refugees after the war ended. Does it ever stop? Did you- Did you find a way to be useful? In part, I guess. Adir, they still got some bad blood with the Deerwood. Goes back to the revolution. Some Adirans like to give Deer Woodens a hard time, they get the chance. With my folks, a group came along and tried to take their land. Made a phony claim to it. What did you do? I sat down with them and we had a friendly negotiation. So you killed him? One fella, well, I don't think I'll ever be able to look to his right again. But we came to an understanding. My folks, well, they didn't see me the same after that. I think they'd have rather given up the land than have it come to violence. Well, but they didn't have to do that. I don't. I don't think they would have rather give it up the land, but that that never happened. Maybe they can't imagine that happening. But what they did see is uh, you being violent. I don't know if that was something we could have avoided, or if it was the cost of trying to fix things. If you like, that's that's all we got. About time we took a breather. My feet are blistered something fierce. Tell me what's on your mind. What do you think about Eotas? We talking during the Saints War or after he died? We already talked about this. No need to fiddle foot around. I'm listening. How is that you came to be a worshipper of Ga more so than e of Eotas? My folks. You might say they're not your typical Aethasians. Sure, they cling to the light more than the darkness, but the war, it touched my family. And it changed them. Killed some. Not that I remember firsthand. The others toughened, turned survivors. That much I saw with my own eyes, even years later. And about your family? They died. I get the feeling you don't really fit with the other dawn stars. I guess it's the nature of light to want to best the darkness. But you can't have balance like that. And it's not like night and death are bad things. Aren't they though? Oh, no use in fear in what's natural. Life isn't one long line. It's cyclical. You gotta shed the old to become the new. Yeah, but what about the gods? They live forever. 
Aren't the others like you? Let's speak of something else. That's all for now. It's best we got. Better get to it, Captain. The green boy isn't going to wait around for us. Okay, sure. Let's go. Don't be thinking at it too hard, Cap. It'd be right hungry for an ill wind. Eltas, where are you? We come all this way. A furious storm obscures the sprawling city below, but you can make out the shape of distant spires reaching up uh, from the flooded ruins. Spread uh, winds uh, tug on your soul with insistence, like a stern hand trying to pull a cloak from your black back. You recall the last time you encountered a Biavak. It feels a lifetime ago. Turn to your companion, so here we are. Why am I so sentimental all of a sudden? You look to those who accompanied you this far, who risked everything to face the confrontation ahead. Um, how are you feeling about this area? Gilded Vale got its name from the way the wheat fields used to look in the sun. But this place, this place really is gilded. Might as well be a different world. In a way, it was. Ended. Yet here we are, all the same. These great people got a funny way of passing on. They disappear from the world, but leave their problems behind for the rest of us to deal with. Maybe I should, uh, at least help us by trying to correct that. You no, know, I broke a wheel once too. First thing I thought of when we learned what Aethys was doing. <laughs> okay. My mom had this spinning wheel, and she loved it. Okay, I like this story. Well, I was playing with it in the way a young child might when his parents are out, and that wheel came right off. I don't... I can't really... I, I know, I don't really have the story out there. I'm not really playing with wheels. It wouldn't go back into place, so I pushed it harder and harder, and pretty soon I'd broken off a spoke. Okay. Broke off three more trying to fix that. Mm hmm Anyway, I got whipped pretty good for it. That wheel was never the same, even after my dad fixed it. I used to think of the gods as being like parents to all of us. Well, now I know better. They're children, playing while their folks are gone. Wow. Okay. What did we learn from that? Not too much. Okay, something on your mind, Soti? We gonna do this or what? Yeah. We've made it this far, yet we're still alive. Might as well square off with my god before our luck runs dry. Luck had nothing to do with it. No matter what happens, Viriotas, you got my back, right? Sure do. If Gon wants you dead, I figure he can do it himself. Besides, the part of him that's been stomping through the dead fire didn't much help me at Mogren's teeth. Tell me, Watcher, can there be a god of light and birth if souls themselves can no longer be reborn? Probably not. Was it worth it all to chase down your god? Reckon it was. Sure, I did some things I now regret. God knows I got plenty of blood on my hands. I thought it'd be different how it turned out. Well, I guess it's kind of my bad. But I couldn't dream of any other way. Now then, shall we go face my god for one last time? Find out what it is we can or can't do in these end times. Whether we're meant to wither or thrive. Yep, let's go. Consider me your second shadow. Maya, you wanna, you wanna pitch in? So, here we stand on Lost Ukaizo. You expected more? My parents gave me an earful about the horizon spanning beaches and towers reaching beyond the stars. All I can see is good folk tussling over a wasteland. Yeah, it was just uh, a dream, a hope. But it wasn't really a good one. 
because the riot ions uh, have goals for the future and the Huana have uh, dreams about the past. So, whatever Ukaiser was, uh, focusing on it is just wrong. Time to confront Aethys. Hopefully for the last time. You know what you're doing? If you can restore order to the Deathfire, this is the place to do it. No matter what happens, I want my soul back. Nah, that's... I, do, I don't even care about that at this point. Yeah. This is the order... This is the place to restore order to the Deathfire? Could be. No time to waste then. I'm about as ready to confront a god as I'll ever be. We're doing good work here. Setting foot on Ukaizo is a statement that no one can ignore. You should be proud. Captain, I... I don't know what's gonna happen to us, but... I want you to know... that I'm not scared, and... I'm glad you're here with me. We got this, Maya. I know we can, Captain. We're good like that. Go give the green boy a piece of your mind. Seraphin, you wanna... You look a little bit troubled. I look back, and I ain't but half sure how we got ourselves here, Cap. On a boat. I've half a mind to be giving the damn things up. Hope you know what you'd be doing. Wouldn't have hoisted the same colors myself. But you'd be well aware of that. Talk myself blue about it by now. I certainly ain't thrilled about shooting up the lads and lasses of the Principe. They ain't perfect by any swabby sorry count. But they be family all the same. I do appreciate you killing all the Principe for me. Taught those shits from Rawatai a thing or two about Sailor now, I Captain? That's it. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I guess we're going. So, reminisce about the good old times we killed a bunch of people. On the Spire. What the hell is this? This looks fancy as hell. How do I interact with it? Am I supposed to? Oh, I see. Though the device atop the tower spins uh, in wild, blurring revolutions, the air around it is still and calm. You stand in the eye of the storm which has cordoned off Andra's mortar from the rest of Eora for thousands of years. You see an antiquated control panel, its levers engaged in positions of activation. A deep percussion shakes the tower by its roots. Somewhere in the obscurity of the storm, Eotas rears back his fist to deliver a mighty blow. The control panel has a weathered uh, millennia better than the rest of the city. A layer of dust covers its elegant uh, glass tubes and engraved copper levers, uh, which appear both intact and fully functional. Let's deactivate the machine. You grip the largest of the levers and bring it up to its starting position. The vibration of machinery gradually slows and Turbulent winds grow calm. Stop! The machine controlling the storm winds down. The clattering of its machinery settles into a low whir and then, at last, hiccups to a halt. Beyond the tower, the black, roiling clouds of Andra's mortar roll away from the ancient city of Ukaizo, with only a tired sigh of wind to see them off. And on that last breath of wind comes to you a familiar sound. The ring of a bell. Not again, gods. The bell's ringing is soft. Not the clangor and torrent you've grown used to. It calls to your soul, and your soul yearns to follow it. Your soul flees from your body and into the beyond, chasing that sound. 
It leads you at last to Bareth's realm. To that cold platform and room of endless doors. Watcher, your journey nears its conclusion. The pallid knight stands before you, her gaunt face impassive. Let's make this quick. I've got an engagement uh, with a living statue. I don't want to be late. You rush headlong toward the end. Do you ever pause to consider where it is you're headed? The pallid knight says. Um, maybe. Sometimes. Soon you will confront Aethys for what will likely be the final time. And you will do so as the Herald of Barath. The only creature on the face of Aora to whom he will listen. Remember that. The pallid knight inclines her head to you. Black hair hanging lank in her face. She steps back and cedes the floor to Helia with a small, resigned sigh. If Aethys truly intends to go through with his mad plan to destroy the wheel, a generation's worth of souls will be trapped in the in-between. So many would suffer. How can Aethys be so cruel? He cannot just abandon them. Aethys must help the kith find a quick solution. He Abaddon strides forward. Aethys thrust this crisis on the kith. They did not bring it upon themselves. Their only mistake was entrusting us to watch over them. Who will help them rebuild their world now? Aethys will reveal every secret of the gods. Will Kith be able to change the established order if they have no wonder to inspire them? Aethys must help them resolve this quickly, lest every one of Aeora's few remaining mysteries be laid plain. We are past the point of help. We need to be led. Don't agree. Should Eotas leave this decision solely to Kit? It's Eotas' obligation to help us fix what is about to break. I'm just answering... Well, but I'm just... Should I ask a question? Should Eotas leave this decision, uh, decision solely to Kit? I guess. You have misgivings. Good. You should be wary of any help Aethys might offer you. Come on. With the wheel destroyed, Kith will tear themselves apart. It is the god's duty to prevent that happening, lest they doom us all. And as Kith must be ruled, so too must the gods. I say that if Aethys is so eager to throw down the mantle of power and step aside, I shall take my rightful place as Queen of the Gods again. I see. You, even right now, you want more power. Kith are strongest when they follow our lead. And we are strongest when we lead in turn. United in purpose with the Gods, Kith can accomplish things that without us, they could never have even begun. They must be shown their boundaries to surpass them. Kith will not solve Aethys' puzzle on their own. And without an established order to fight against, the bonds that bind them dissolve, and they fight amongst themselves. They already Stan do that. Says, and casts a long look toward Wodaka. We've proved how ill-suited we are to leading ourselves. Perhaps you are right. Perhaps so. Well, you're right that... People are not that good at leading themselves, but that doesn't mean you did a good job, that's quite obvious. How can we trust you to lead us after this? No, we have to figure out... ...in our time. Figure this out in our time, at our own pace. Yeah. How can we trust you to lead us after this? I, I don't want anybody to lead me. No, we have to figure this out in our in our time at our own pace. That confidence is what will save Kith, Watcher. Do not lose it when you stand before Aethys. Really? Wodica's firm hand is but the motherly smothering of Helia by another name. 
Mortals should have no special advantages. Only once kith have striven to improve themselves through trial will they truly know their measure. Kith must suffer to find their strength if they are to survive the world into which Aethas drags them. G Our intervention in your struggle would be a cruelty and counter to our purpose. Galloway says, he lets his words hang in the air for a moment. Gaze, level with your own. Indeed. Kith must discover for themselves what it is they are worth, and of what it is they are capable. What we do for them, they do not learn for themselves. Trial breeds ingenuity. If our work of generations was not in vain, Kith will succeed in spite of Aethys's actions. Mogren says. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just I'm just properly confused right now. I have faith in Kit's ability to meet Aethys's challenge. Do not mistake my words for indifference, Watcher. They are born from a fierce belief in your potential, not a refutation of it. Aethas wouldn't do this if he didn't agree with you. Maybe we are not doomed after all. You would abandon us, just like that, when we need you the most? Spare me, our leaders couldn't even work together under the threat of Aeotas destroying the wheel. That is a good point. I would like to make that point. It just feels like... Maybe I just need to uh, bottom line this. Like, we need to figure out what the hell. So the thing is, Aethas is doing this to give Kit... Kit the ability to be not ruled by... Kit, Kit uh, the, the, the chance to be not ruled by gods. And uh, they don't have much choice. Because the wheel powers the gods. This could be... Kit's one and possibly only chance to break free from the wheel. And who would they become? Like, they would be not dead if the wheel stayed in place. But they also not ready. But, but would they be... Will they be ever ready? Spare me, our leaders couldn't even work together under the threat of Eotas destroying the wheel. Neither could the gods, so this doesn't... I, I, I like that. I would I, I do love to talk shit of that and uh, shit of the leaders. And uh, that, that conversation option is very tempting. <sighs> yeah, our leaders couldn't even work together under the threat of Eotas destroying the wheel. You see clearly at last. Remergond says. Margren is blinded by her affection for mortals. She does not see that entropy is the destiny of all things. If Aethas were wise, he would destroy everything. End life. End reincarnation. End death. Okay, uh... Psycho, uh... I don't know, Ram. Thanks for that uh, information. Kith have had their chance. It is time to let silence reign. But you shouldn't start with yourself. As Rimmergon's words fade, the Pallid Knight returns. She no longer towers over you, a giant even among the gods, but meets you at your height. She lets the arms crossed over her chest fall to her sides. 
She speaks to you openly, plainly, an expression almost like tenderness, turning up the corners of her lips. Well, Watcher, you know where we stand. What do you believe? The veil is your creation. You owe us your help fixing it. Exactly. My... You know, we could leverage this to... For the gods to give up their power. If the gods would willingly give up their power, they wouldn't need to die. You only need to step down, I suppose. The wheel is your creation, you must help your help fixing it. I like that a lot. But I'm under the impression that they are unwilling to consider this, and maybe Altus is pressuring them to consider this. Everything that's happened, everything that will happen is the gods' fault. Be better off without you. I don't agree with that. That's a very simplistic way to look at it. Well, the, technically the gods uh, were more powerful and were in charge of maybe some people. But no, that's just really shifting responsibility. If anything, I would uh, put the responsibility on the, on the individual. <clears throat> True change, lasting change, demand sacrifice, the coming days will be hard, but we will be the better for it. That's just naive a little bit. But if it doesn't work, what if uh, Eotas destroys the wheel, then the kit uh, doesn't fix it, and everybody dies. I don't like it. Like, I do like this as a, as a move to put pressure on the gods, but the move itself is... Ah, it's, it's questionable. It's very desperate. Things are fine as they are. If we can stop Eotas from destroying the wheel, we should only rebuild it as it was. I don't care. <laughs> the gods did what they could. We take it from here. I don't know. The gods. This is the best. The wheel is your creation. You us your help fixing it. Even if it. It's not a viable option. It helps me push me. It helps me decide. The pallid knight raises one dark eyebrow. I did not conjure the wheel as you know it now from the air. It was built slowly, with great deliberation by Kith. It is as much your wheel as mine. Now the time has come for us to part, Watcher. I laid upon you a difficult duty. And you have discharged it well. You will be free of it in time, but not now. You have work to do yet. You are no stranger to hard choices. You killed Theos, and when his soul was laid bare before you, you chose to destroy his memories. You freed him from his past. Yeah, this is definitely not my playthrough. I totally killed... Oh. Or whatever. Well, I definitely killed Teos. Remember the strength remember it that. took to make that choice. And know that you alone may sway Aethys now. When you stand before him, choose your words carefully. And what I meant is that I just chose uh, uh, one of the uh, options at the start of the game. I didn't load my save file. Okay, choose my words carefully. Okay. But thing is, either we go with an extreme possible solution that leads to a maybe, or we stuck with a a bad solution that possibly will remain as bad. And change is probably never gonna happen because the gods rely on uh, being in control. So there's never gonna be a day that the gods gonna be forgotten and uh... Like, kids just can't ignore the gods. Like, they don't get their power from belief. They get their power from uh, kids dying. She claps her gauntleted hands together and a sound like thunder rumbles through the room. As the floor crumbles and falls away beneath you, you hear the sound of a single bell ringing, and beneath it, 
the faintest whisper. Hey, Eltas. He's actually just doing some exercises in the distance. I didn't even see him. Consciousness returns in a wave as the last uh, of the machine energy dissipates. The calming of the storm reveals the sprawling city around you like a sand wipe from a mosaic. You see the distant outline of Eotas raising his fist in triumph and purpose. Is he doing that? You keep falling asleep on me, I'm gonna have to start walking behind you with a pillow. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, the storm's gone. Also, I think Aethys is ended in the world. Great. If all your missions involve this many head wounds, then I volunteer to set the next one out. God's darnation. My head. Uh, and here with me thinking we were right and proper dead this time. We ain't dead, right? Peering over the edge of the tower, you make out a distant shape amid the ruins below. A ragged ship has settled offshore where it lists uh, at a drunken angle. Flag of the Principi dropping from the tilted mast. The empty deck tells that the surviving crew has long since boarded the skiff and rowed to shore, which means you're no longer alone on Manukaizo. Well, sigh and draw your weapon. This ain't gonna be the first time. And actually. This is the time to take a break before we, uh, not sure what he's doing. Looks like he's punching some kind of arena. I don't know, but we gotta hurry. So that's it for now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.